to our Navi goes. Today we're gonna discuss about tides. Topics covered in this video. Tides, tide terminology, effect of weather on tides. Let us look into what are tides. Tides are the periodical rise and fall of the level of seas. In mid-oceans, where depth of water is large, the tidal range is small. But where the waters are shallow, the tidal range increases. Most accepted theory that put forward by Sir Isaac Newton, that is the equilibrium theory to explain what are tides. So let us look into how these tides are formed. Let's check out a small video for this. So you'll get a better idea. Up and down movement of the oceans are a result of three main forces. The influence of the moon, of the sun, and the rotation of the Earth. The Earth and the Moon are mutually attracted by a gravitational pull. But inevitably, the point on the Earth furthest from the Moon is less drawn than the point closest to it. Thus, the gravitational force has an effect of stretching the Earth, causing the sphere to deform and the waters of the oceans to produce twin tidal bulges or static tides. The effect of the Sun is the same, but because of its considerably greater distance from the Earth, the influence is only half as great as that of the Moon. If the Earth, Moon and the Sun are in alignment, the effects are multiplied. And it is then that the highest tides, the spring tides, occur. But if the Earth, Sun and the Moon are at right angles, their effects counter each other and produce the lower neap tides. All this is, however, influenced by the rotation of the Earth, whose main effect is on the time and place the tides occur. Thus, waves form on the ocean surface of varying heights. The current, depth and the shape of the coastline will also determine the power of the waves, which helps to explain why tides are usually semi-diurnal, with two high waters and two low waters a day, while in some places there is just the one daily tidal cycle. Now let's look into what are diurnal, semi-diurnal and mixed tides. You can see the graphs and the definitions. Diurnals are one high tide and one low tide per day. Semi-diurnals are two equal high and low tides per day. Mixed tides are two unequal and high and low tides per day. This is the most common types of tides that you can be seen. Now what are tidal terminologies? There are different terminologies used in tides which you will be able to see on your charts and all. Now let's look into what are these terminologies. Spring tides. On full moon and new moon days, sun in conjunction and opposition with moon tide racing forces are acting in same line this produces very high high waters and very low low waters range of tide is large so now what are neap tides when moon is in quadrature, tide racing forces due to sun and moon acts in direction 90 degree to each other. Solar tides produce high waters, but low waters are produced by the moon. Thus, this lunisolar combination, high waters are not very high, lunisolar low waters are also not very low. Range of tide is not very large. So the range of tides in Neap is small and in the spring it's high. 
Let's look into equinoctial and solar tides. At equinoxes, that's in March and September, declination of moon and sun are both zero. Semi-diurnal lunisolar tide racing forces will be at maximum. Tides larger than normal spring tides occur. This is called equinoctial tides. Now during solstices in June and December, declination of moon and sun are both maximum. Diurnal lunisolar tide racing forces will be maximum. Spring tides lower than normal will occur. This is called celestial tides. You can see the graphs with the in spring tides you can see the new moon, the earth, the full moon. These are in a single line. So in new moon days the earth, the new moon and the sun in a line and on full moon earth between the sun and the moon but in same line. This produces very very high high waters and very low low waters. Similarly in Neep you have the sun and the moon at 90 degrees earth being the center. This produces high waters and low waters but these high waters are not very high and these low waters are not very low. That's why the range is not that large. Range in spring tides are very large because the two forces are acting in same direction and line and in neap tide the forces are acting in 90 degrees to each other so the range is small. Now let's look into this diagram. This is the diagram where the chart datum you can see at the bottom and there are some drying heights. This chart datum is also called as lowest astronomical tide and there are some rocks that's covered and uncovered by the tides. These are all called as drying heights. And at the top of the chart you can see the chartered high water that is H A T that's highest astronomical tide that is the height that the maximum tide can go up to and the low astronomical tide or L A T is the lowest height to which a tide can go. Also there were some cases where the height of tide was fallen below L A T those were indicated as negative tides and there were cases where the tides were gone above H A T but for the calculation purposes and in Admiralty tide tables this will be referred as L A T and H A T. Between them you have the mean high water spring, mean high water nape, mean low water nape and mean low water spring. The spring range tides is between the mean high water spring and the mean low water spring. That will be the highest of the mean high waters and the lowest of the mean low waters. That will be the spring. As we discussed this will be the high high waters and the low low waters. And the neap tides will be between them. That will be a short range than the spring range. This is how this happens. Now let us look into the significance of LAT, lowest astronomical tide. This is also called as chart datum. Significances are lowest astronomical tide. We use this three features based on LAT charter depth, height of tide and drying heights of objects that covers and uncovers. Now let us look into the significance of MHWS mean high water spring. Height of all ob objects that do not get submerged under sea is measured from mean high water spring. 
This is what we use to measure the bridges and all. Now let us look into the effect of feather on tides. Weather is affected to the tides. Meteorological conditions in different areas cause a difference in predicted and actual tides. Tides are calculated at average barometric pressure at any area. So this can be affected if it's not at the normal barometric pressure. Low barometric tendency tends to rise the sea level. Similarly, the high pressure tendency can lower the tide level or the sea level. Winds are also tend to raise or lower the tides or the sea level. Winds raise the sea level to the side where it is blown or blowing. Winds blowing of the land tends to lower the sea level. Hope you guys like the channel. This is Ahio Amigo signing off. Please subscribe to the channel if you like for more interesting dance.